my brightest moment uh, during this pandemic was opening night in our Big Ten series and uh, the premiere of Pagliacci. After seven or eight months of not being able to perform, uh, we heard the first notes of the opera Pagliacci. We had an audience, a packed audience of 200 people, an orchestra and a cast of eight singers that performed an amazing performance. Uh, it was one of the only performances in America uh, during that time. And uh, we were so proud of the fact that our efforts in terms of safety uh, were paid off in, in a way that none of them got sick, none of our audience uh, was exposed to anything. They all enjoyed an amazing performance uh, despite this pandemic. So that was a, a great moment for me and my whole team to watch a live performance during all of this. I think the darkest moment was waking up uh, after Hurricane Zeta uh, hit the southern part of the United States and realizing that it caused so many damages to our tent, uh, to our orchestra tent was uh, completely blown in the wind. We had to rebuild it uh, and getting into the performance, uh, the performance area and realizing that it's full of water and mud and that we had to rebuild everything uh, was a hard, dark moment, but then it just changed into uh, an elation because our team was able to perform the next day. Can you tell us, if you can, about how this has affected the opera regarding your finances and regarding fundraising? And, and just where is it going now? I mean, because I know that most of our arts organizations have really suffered very dramatically as a result of this. You apparently have been luckier than most. Um, Ashley had let me know that, in fact, you've been able to keep your staff intact, which is in itself remarkable. But how has this affected your finances and the way you're going to move forward? So from very early on in the process of this pandemic, uh, when we all realized back in March that we have to basically cancel the rest of the season, our board of directors uh, and the senior management team met and decided to make very early on radical changes to the budget uh, that included uh, canceling the 2021 season, performing in a circus tent, reducing the budget by 35%. We had to take uh, salary cuts. We had to change health benefits. We had to lay off some staff. And uh, we created a season that is no less ambitious than the season that was planned that included uh, all those shows in a tent, Kaiser from Atlantis, Pagliacci, and now Three Penny Opera and Three Penny Carmen. So we made those very, very radical decisions very early on in the pandemic, including significant cuts. And what happened is because we decided to uh, have the grit and perseverance to perform and the idea that the show must go on uh, is, is the ethos of the company. Uh, we were rewarded in a big, big way. Not only did we have sold out performances and people came to see the shows and were very excited about it. There was an incredible coverage uh, nationally and internationally from the Wall Street Journal to PBS NewsHour, but also our board of directors our donors realized that there is something special about this group of people that are working for the Atlanta Opera and about what we're doing as a company. And our fundraising uh, has been very successful uh, ever since then. And as we look into the future and hopefully getting out of the situation of the pandemic, uh, we are looking at getting back to pre-pandemic budget level and restoring what used to be before the pandemic. Do you have, and I, I assume the answer is you don't, but do you have any kind of an idea uh, once the pandemic uh, hopefully moves on that you'll be able to bring back some of those folks you had to lay off. And how many people are actually involved, were involved in that layoff? And uh, do you think there's a chance you'll bring them back? So uh, when, when we hit uh, the darkest moments in the pandemic, uh, we had to do some furloughs and we had to do some layoffs. Uh, and about six people were laid off. Uh, since then, we were able to slowly hire people back. And as we look into uh, next season, uh, we're looking at full staffing and maybe even increasing uh, the number of people that are working for us as the company grows and moves forward. One of the great things that came out of the pandemic uh, are competencies that we never had before. So uh, our team uh, created this initiative 
of the Spotlight Media, which is a platform of streaming, of capturing all of our productions and original material that we are uh, producing on film and putting it on uh, a streaming device that we call the Spotlight Media. And my colleague, Ashley Mirakian, uh, led, led that initiative. And so as we move forward out of this pandemic, we actually have new innovations that would continue with us in the future that did not exist before. Spotlight Media is one of them. The other one is the company of players. So we now have 12 singers that are located in the Southeast uh, around Atlanta that are a part of the company. And as we move forward, we believe that this is something that we will continue to do in the future. Looking ahead, do you feel the pandemic has made an extraordinary impact on your reputation worldwide that people who probably have never heard of you or never knew what you were really doing in Atlanta because of what you've done that's so original now have suddenly woken up to who you are? Well, I think that what happens in 2020 or 2021 is that the world is connected much more than it ever was before. And if you used to do a production uh, where 2,000 people will come to see it in an auditorium, that was it. Maybe you would get a review about that and uh, people will know about you in your hometown. But what the digital world is doing and the way that we're connected via social media, via video, via streaming devices, suddenly the world is much smaller and people all over the world have the possibility of uh, seeing what we're doing in this tent in Atlanta. And uh, there's definitely much more opportunity to have a, an exposure on a much larger scale than we've ever experienced before. So I'm very grateful for innovation and technology for allowing us to do it. And uh, I think that moving forward will be a, a very different, we will be a very different organization than we were before. Would you have ever thought of doing this if there was no pandemic? We were dreaming about doing it. Uh, but uh, when you have a crisis like that, it expedites everything. It becomes a catalyst for everything that you wanted to do because you have no other choice but doing it. And it's not only us. I mean, if you look at companies all over the world, uh, they've had to uh, do the same thing. I mean, the, the thing we're doing right now where we are having a, a TV interview uh, in, in my home, that's something that was not possible five years ago or even a couple of years ago. And suddenly... All those things are available for us to take advantage of. And one of the things that was a mantra for my board of directors and my senior manager was that you never waste a crisis. You look at the crisis as an opportunity to build things that you did not imagine could exist. Just one last question, if I may, Tomer, and that's, you said you had a packed audience and you had an orchestra and the whole thing. How did you possibly do that with all of the restrictions of CDC. I know you had Emory involved, but how did you possibly do that? So we had an amazing partnership with Dr. Carlos De Rio, uh, and he came up with uh, our production team uh, with a protocol that is about 50 pages of all the things that we need to do in order to perform safely. From having the audience in pods, requiring them to have surveys before they enter and have masks on the whole time, to having plexiglass dividers uh, between orchestra members, having singers sing divided with vinyl barriers, to testing every week, to changing staging so that uh, orchestra uh, is reduced and chorus uh, is not involved or chorus is being piped in through video. So we came up with all those innovations and tricks that allowed us to perform safely. And one of the amazing things uh, in hindsight is that uh, as we look back, we had 20 performances, uh, over 2,500 people saw the show live, over 130 people, artists, musicians, actors, circus performers uh, were able to perform with us without an outbreak. And that is a testament to uh, Carlos Del Rio and our partners at uh, Emory Healthcare that came up with all those um, protocols that kept us uh, safe.